2030 itakuwa vision 3020 violin Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone and I want to welcome you to our second webinar and thank you for taking your time and uh, I hope you're going to have a very, very wonderful conversation here today. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, speakers, Mama Siri and Champions of Human Rights, I am honored to welcome you to our second webinar on the intersection of corruption and bodily autonomy of women with disabilities. We are here today to talk about a very significant issue. Uh, and this is how corruption affects the rights and choices of women with disabilities. This is especially important as we observe the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We all know that this month is, uh, is the month that we, we, we celebrate or we commemorate the awareness of breast cancer. So we are here today to talk about a very during this month, we highlight the challenges women face with breast cancer. But for women with disabilities, these challenges are often uh, um, even tougher. Corruption within the healthcare systems can make it harder for them to access the care they need and make decisions about their own bodies. Corruption is like a hidden problem that makes our societies weaker and less fair. For women with disabilities, it can mean they don't get the healthcare they should and it limits their control over their own bodies. In today's webinar, we have experts uh, and people with real life experiences uh, and that will be our Mama Siri, who will explain these challenges. We'll also look at ways to help women with disabilities who have more control over their bodies and their lives. So the objective of our, today, of our today's meeting, uh, today's, um, um, webinar is to build evidence on the linkages of corruption and its effect on the sexual reproductive health rights of women and girls with disabilities. We all know that there are a few to none organizations who are working uh, in corruption and how it, it links with um, bodily autonomy or SRHR. So we want to take this opportunity to start our own uh, conversation and have provide evidences to the government, to those who are uh, the, the, to the policy bearers on how we can curb corruption within a SRHR department. So our desired outcomes for today is one, uh, the number of women with disabilities in Kenya exercising their fundamental freedoms and participating actively in the civic space and anti-corruption discourse increases. Two, Cultural shifts and understanding of pro ableism and negative narratives on power, disability, and autonomy in Kenya. Three, strengthened advocacy based on research and evidence generated on the effects of corruption on the sexual reproductive health and rights of, of women with disabilities in Kenya. So thank you for joining us today. Together we can work to make the world a fairer and more inclusive place for women, regardless of their abilities. So thank you once again. My name is Veronica Akinyi from Disability Trust uh, Projects Department, and I'm happy to be here with you today. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of Disability Trust. But Disability Trust is an organization that advances the rights of women and girls with disabilities. We are currently present in eight counties in Kenya. That is Nairobi, Mombasa, Kwale, Kilifi, Kajiado, Kakamega, Kisumu, Mombasa, and Mombasa. Those are, uh, are eight counties that we are present in. Uh, some of our programs that are currently running in those eight counties are, one is Mama Siri. Mama Siri is a toll-free number that uh, a woman with disability can call and they, they can be given referrals. These uh, referrals can uh, be covered in areas of SRHR, family planning, uh, SGBV, and whatever. With the number that uh, they usually call, it is a toll free number, is 0800 300. That is the number that uh, somebody can call and they will easily access Mama Siri nearest to their counties. 
Another project that we have is Hesabika. This is a, a data or a tool that is used to capture the data of uh, persons with disabilities in Kenya. And it is one that doesn't um, really focus on women. It, it captures the data of both men and women in Kenya. The number to dial is a, a USSD code and it is called um, star 548 hash. And uh, you will be able to, you'll be asked a few questions and your data will be captured if you're a person with disability. Another program that we have is called Skills. And in Skills, we train uh, digital, we have digital data program and we also have healthcare pro uh, providers program. So that is a, a brief overview of our today's, of our disability trust uh, organization. So I want us to have a two minute conversation on the, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We all know that we have a Breast Cancer Awareness Month today. And I just want to have two or um, two or more conversations on, do you know anybody who has had uh, uh, breast, let me say cancer or breast cancer issue when they, and when they visited the hospital, how did they, were they helped or they were not helped? So I'm going to pick uh, one of our mama Siri, whom I know is a, a survivor. Um, and she's going to tell us her story a little bit. So, uh, you will only take one minute approximately. So I'm going to pick Justin Leshao. Can you tell us what was your experience when you were diagnosed with uh, your, your problem and were you able to be helped at the hospital? Okay, good, good evening, Mama Ziris. Disability Trust, good evening. Good evening. My, my name is Josephine Leshao from Kajiado County. Mimi wakati nipatikana na kansa, nipatikana na kansa ya jicho, but haikuwa raisi pia. Lakini wale wa mama wanyo nipatikana na kansa ya macho, hawapati utajibu ya kutosha. Kwa sababu sigi maikuju, hawa wa mama wakienda hospitali wakipimo wakipatikana wakona kansa ya onea matiti, Unakuta wakona, wana diskriminatiwa kutoka kwa jamii mbaka kwa madaktari. Alafu ile kitu kubwa sana serikali inatufanyia makosa. Message yenye daktari atakupatia. Iyo inakufanya unakufa hata kabla kansa ijakuwa. Because daktari awezi kukwe, awa, awawezi kutukua ile jukumu ya kukukansol kwanza. Wakufanyia counseling, ndiyo wakupatie message. Kwamba ulifanyiwa biopsy, ukapatikana ni kansa ya titi. Na kansa hiko stage gani. For example, kuna wamama mwenye tumekua na umoja wao, alienda kapatikana na kansa ya titi. Na wakati alipatikana badala daktari amfanyie counseling kwanza, alimuambia sasa unajua wewe utakatu wa matiti na kansa imefika stage 4. Unfortunately, wakati mtu umeambiwa hivyo, unajua kama mwanadamu lazima ukue chini sana. Lakini kwa sababu ini mwezi wa Cancer Awareness Month, tumekua tukitetelea wa mama wa breast cancer na cancer as a whole. So tunaendelea kuimiza wa mama, waende wapime mapema na wa, wa, kuna, tunawasaidia kukua na mental health. Kwa sababu, mtu kiambiwa hivyo unakuja chini. Mimi kama cancer survivor, ninaendanga mbaka huko, tunafanya forums, tunaenda tunawaongelesha, ndio wanaona cancer sio death sentence, Uneza gonjeka kansa na uneza tibiwa upone. Kama mimi sahi, ama kansa survivor 13 years ago, na I thank God because I'm here now to advocate. Mamba ya kansa survivors. Thank you. Asante sana, Josephine, for a wonderful uh, uh, lived-in experience. So I'm, I'm going to just stick with, uh, because of time, I'm going to stick with... Uh, just Finn's presentation. So at this point, I'm going to take it over to Vilda, our facilitator for today, to take it up and uh, uh, let us have a wonderful and engaging conversation. Uh, Vilda, welcome. Hi, everyone. I hope Hi. you are doing well. Uh, oh, maybe yeah. you can just confirm from the reaction if you can hear me and you are doing well this wonderful afternoon. So before we start this session, uh, I was just trying to think of, uh, we do have choices and also we talk about rights at the same time. But then again, we are talking about corruption as a broad range of effects on the health sector. 
by an extension on the reproductive health among women with disabilities. But uh, we realize as much as we talk about this, disability and then also being a woman gives you a double discrimination or let me say vulnerability. So in regards to today, we are going to have a very wonderful session with our amazing uh, first, uh, five speakers whom are very able and going to do some presentation. Our topic today is on how do the effect of corruption show up in the lives lived experience of women with disability. And just to say, uh, we have a diverse group and I hope we are going to learn together. Wherever you are joining from, you are welcome. And we wish that uh, you stay with us until the end of this session. As we start, uh, my name is Vilda Tieno and I'm great to be your facilitator today. I'm first going to introduce my speakers. And uh, when they introduce themselves, I kindly request that maybe you tell us your name, where you are coming from, and then also what you do and any relevant thing that you want us to know about you. So in regards to introduction, I'm going to first of all uh, ask Maureen to introduce yourself. Thank you. Back to you, Maureen. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Maureen. I'm in, I'm in Eldoret. And I'm working with CBO, community-based organization that are reaching female sex workers in Wasinigishu. And I'm glad and happy to join you guys on issue of um, girls and women with disability. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Maureen, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I hope you are going to learn more from Maureen when her time comes. Uh, allow me to move to the next uh, speaker, who is uh, Immaculate. Immaculate, kindly introduce yourself. Thank you. Immaculate, can you hear me? Okay, so maybe as we wait for Immaculate, uh, I think maybe they might be having issues with the maybe network. Allow me now to ask Innocent to introduce uh, himself. Innocent, kindly go ahead. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to meet once again with Innocent and Dejo. I work with the Productive Health Network as the Youth Coordinator. Um, glad to be here and I hope to learn and uh, also share my experience and my opinions. Thank you so much for the to you. Thank you, Innocent. And as we talk about women, I'm glad to see a man in the house who is supporting also this course. So the next presenter, I'll ask uh, Vera. Vera, will you kindly introduce yourself? Hello, how are you, Vera? I'm called Vestada Vera from Kisumu. And uh, I am a university student. I'm at Mount Kenya. Thank you. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Veronica, kindly confirm because I didn't hear Vera introduce herself. Yes, I can hear you. We can advise Veronica, uh, Vera to, to put her camera on, her camera was off. Okay, maybe Vera, uh, sorry, you can put your camera on so that we can, yeah, thank you. Kindly introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Seda Vera from Kisumu and I'm a student at Mount Kenya University taking Bachelor Arts in Community Development. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. And uh, maybe I'll go back to Immaculate. If Hi, 
Okay. Hi, hi. Can you hear me, Vilda? Yes, I can hear you well. All right, I'm Immaculate Amundi. I'm a student at Masinde Muliro. Right now, I'm in Kakamega. I'm pursuing masters in peace and conflict, and I'm also a champion of teen moms, stroke young moms. I'm champion for the integration of uh, young moms, stroke teen moms back to school. And this way, I've gotten up on an opportunity to interact with a number of teen moms, young moms with disabilities. I'll be glad to listen and to share. Thank you so much. Wow, uh, thank you so much, Immaculate. And uh, finally, to our last uh, presenter, who is our speaker also, uh, Sophie, will you kindly introduce yourself? Sophie? Okay. Uh, maybe if Sophie will be on board, uh, we'll allow her to introduce herself maybe later. But allow me now to proceed uh, with uh, our topic of today, where we are talking about how the effect of corruption show up in the lived experience of women with disabilities. And in regards to that, just as I said earlier, we have our amazing, uh, powerful people in the house who are going to give us uh, a brief presentation in regards to God that I hope that we learn once again. And uh, if you have a question in regards to a presentation, I kindly request us that we take note of the question and uh, probably at the end of the presentation, we'll give you a time to ask the question and i believe you're going to have a, an amazing conversation once again thank you for joining and in regards to that allow me to introduce uh innocent who is our first presenter in regards to this uh, conversation welcome innocent thank you thank you so much um i don't know where to begin from <laughs> Because uh, understanding the aspect of persons with disability and integrating that aspect in the issue of corruption, leadership, and governance within our country, we understand that uh, to some extent, persons with disability have been excluded. But before we look at that, I would like to first of all highlight a few uh, pointers. Uh, looking first of all at the data that we have, basing, uh, basically basing on the uh, 2019 uh, Kenya Health Demographic Survey data. Me, Yes. Uh, kindly, will you move closer maybe to your speaker so that uh, we don't strain to get you kindly? Okay, let me, let me try and see if I can add the volume. Are you able to hear me clearly now? Am I audible? Yes, kindly proceed. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, uh, First of all, to, uh, I've been looking first of all at the, the data that we have about the population of persons with disability in the country uh, for the past, let's say, 20 years. And if you look at the 2019 uh, census, we are told that uh, we've had a significant drop in the population for persons with disabilities, uh, or let me say the, the ratio of the persons with disabilities uh, compared to other people has been has significantly dropped. Uh, that's uh, whereby we're told that uh, we have, uh, we were, in 2019, the data we were told that it was around 2.2% uh, uh, vis a vis the one that we had in 2009, which was at 3.5%. So you look at that and you realize that the, that, that the ratio has dropped from 35 to 2.2%, which is by approximately 1.3%. And uh, if you look at the 2019 data, we are told that uh, persons with disability in general, uh, putting together all the domains, uh, we had a population of about 900,000 persons with disability during the 2019 census. So this tells us that we have a good number, a, 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 a good population, which needs uh, effective recommendation, which needs to access services, which needs to be uh, protected, which needs to be promoted, which needs to be empowered uh, in all dimensions when it comes to access to services, when it comes to access to information, 
when it comes to even enjoying these services. Uh, and for me, with my experience in sexual productive health, I would like mostly to base my uh, argument, maybe my discussions on the access to sexual productive health services uh, within the country. So uh, basically, I want to begin with uh, mm. the aspect of barriers that our women and girls uh, who are persons with disabilities face when it comes to exercising their sexual productive health and rights. And for the barriers, I think I might speak to about five barriers that have been hindering our women and girls uh, mostly, but at the same time, I'll try to highlight some of the opportunities that we've had, or let me say some of the low hanging fruits that we've had uh, from our partners, uh, our civil society organizations, and also our government when it comes to ensuring that our women and girls with disabilities access uh, sexual reproductive health and rights services effectively. So one of the barriers I will speak to is the aspect of physical disability. Uh, or maybe, let, me, let me just mention them, let me just mention them and then I might come and expand on a few of them. We have the physical disabilities, we have the communication barriers, we have the stigma and discrimination, we have uh, limited uh, information about reproductive health, we have economic barriers that have been barring them from accessing uh, this uh, or enjoying the SRHR services. So one of the things that I want to speak to one is the physical uh, accessibility. So when you speak about physical accessibility, you, look, uh, you, you understand that most of our health facilities, as much as we say we are having youth-friendly health centers, as much as we're saying we are having uh, uh, client-friendly or human uh, uh, user-friendly uh, health facilities, the problem we are having is most of these health facilities are not integrating the needs and uh, the, the needs and the interests of persons with disabilities. For instance, if you look at most of the in construction, the, the infrastructure that has been set up, most of them are not uh, responding to the needs of persons with disabilities. For example, people who are lame, uh, you find that most of the facilities have good stairs and probably others have, uh, most of them have good stairs and find that probably persons with disabilities find it difficult, uh, the physical disabilities, they find it difficult accessing those uh, different infrastructure accessing, even the toilet, the latrines themselves, even the beds themselves. You find that some of these infrastructure are not uh, uh, well, uh, made or developed to, to put into consideration the needs and the interests of persons with disabilities. So it becomes a difficulty and a challenge for persons with disabilities to access these services and even use them. Another thing I want to speak to is the aspect of communication barrier. And I want to pay uh, today's conversation where we're having uh, an interpreter, person, uh, an interpreter who is helping us to uh, assign interpreter. And I like that because we're having uh, both the, the, the audio and also uh, the sign language whereby we are having each and every person who wants to or who feels like they would love to listen to this conversation, getting the opportunity to just join in and listen to the conversation. And if they cannot be able to listen to the conversation, then they have the opportunity to still uh, uh, learn from the sign interpretation. So unlike most of our facilities, we, we realize that uh, persons like uh, deaf and uh, hard of hearing individuals struggle to access information about sexual productive health. This is because sign language interpretation of availability of information in a, uh, is, is not accessible uh, in the formats that respond to such persons. So it's difficult for persons uh, such as deaf persons, uh, blind persons to access this uh, information and also to just enjoy and even ask questions on how do we want to be treated, how do we want to be uh, 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 look at how do we want to be solved. So it becomes a, another problem. And that uh, aspect whereby we're having communication barriers links so much into this other problem that I will want to speak to, which is the aspect of discrimination, whereby one will have self-discrimination and then we have discrimination where other, where, where other people look at you and treat you in a, 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 in inhuman ways. So I want to say that most women and girls with disabilities often face societal stigma and discrimination. This uh, deters them many a times from seeking SRHR services. The stigma is based many a times on misconceptions about their sexual uh, capabilities. Just taking an example of um, my colleague who just shared their story uh, about the breast cancer issue, whereby I find that if you have an issue uh, and you are passing with disability, 
healthcare providers, and even the community at general. Many a times you find that people are now looking at you from a different lens when in real sense you're just a human being like any other person. Uh, the other thing I want to speak to is the aspect of limited access to knowledge and whatever we say, lack or limited access to comprehensive sexual, uh, sexuality education programs that are tailored to individuals, with person, uh, individuals or persons with disability have resulted in inadequate knowledge of the HRHR. Because you find that many times when we are having sessions on HRHR, many times when we are having uh, conferences, when we are having programs on SRHR, when you are having activities on SRHR, many times these activities, these conferences have very little, if not at all, uh, inclusion of the, of, of the interests of persons with disabilities. So if such things can be looked into and effectively worked on, it can be a good thing. Then uh, now I want to uh, intersect this aspect with uh, corruption and uh, Looking at corruption in our country right now, uh, just basing on what the former president said, I think that was last year when the former president said that we are losing approximately, was it 2 million, two, two million shillings a day to corruption? And many times I've seen this happen in counties also, whereby you find that uh, persons with disabilities will be a form formulating and even uh, uh, leveraging opportunities at the county and even the national level. For instance, at the counties, we should have the uh, budget, county budget and economic forums, uh, CBF, which need to have persons with disabilities represented in each and every county. We find that most counties, one, they delay to have uh, these persons are nominated or elected to sit in those spaces. Two, when they're nominated, many times, their positions are not put into consideration very well. Their voices are not heard and responded to very well. So you find that uh, many a times resources are not effectively allocated to programs and projects that are geared towards ensuring that persons with disabilities access their services, access and enjoy their uh, rights effectively. Another thing I'll speak to that uh, that that uh, trickles down from the aspect of resource diversification. Uh, and this is, no, I mean, the resource diversion is the aspect of primary and discrimination. This is whereby you find that persons with disabilities uh, find it difficult to access uh, or to, to enjoy their rights effectively because corruption within the health institutions facilitate discriminatory practices, including bribes and uh, access services. And this creates an environment where women and girls with disabilities face additional barriers due to the financial constraints, because we understand that not every person is financially stable and financially capable. So if we have so much, so many issues of corruption, we realize that Many a times, persons with disabilities are left out. Many a times, persons with disabilities are pushed behind when it comes to accessing and enjoying their uh, rights and opportunities. And then the other aspect I want to speak to is the aspect of limited or lack of accountability. I want to hail some of the organizations that, that we've had, like Transparency International, we've had, uh, that have been working towards ensuring that counties and also community based organizations are. Uh, following up with the counties to ensure that there is accountability in uh, resource allocation, there's accountability when it comes to program implementation. So uh, if these things can be uh, effectively or continuously strengthened, I believe we can, we can have programs and uh, projects that support persons with disabilities to just access and enjoy their right, access and enjoy their projects accessible to them. And then if you look at another thing that uh, uh, looks at the aspect of accountability also. When you're having employment opportunities at the county level, at the national levels, and even when you're having, uh, 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 even at the healthcare facilities, you realize that many a times, if you go and you realize that you are a person with disability, at times you you uh, you might miss out on certain opportunities just because of uh, your, your your physical uh, appearance because. They say that if you are a person with disability, you might you you will not be able to implement this. When in real sense, they have not given you that opportunity. They have not given you that opportunity to try and see if you can and really you can do that. And I believe persons with disabilities, just as any other human being, have the capability and have even uh, a better understanding and a better experience and a better way of doing things than uh, the other normal human beings. Uh, 
And then finalize, I would like to look at the aspect of advocacy and awareness, whereby I would just like to speak to the aspect of the importance of advocacy in addressing corruption, uh, as an, uh, the impact of corruption on sexual reproductive health, uh, what specifically the, uh, an interest on persons with disabilities, and this is specifically women and adults with disabilities. So one of the things I want to speak to is the aspect of legal reforms, whereby with legal reforms, I mean, we need to have advocacy, uh, advocacy moves, uh, movements, advocacy programs that are focused towards pushing legal reforms so that they can be able to combat health uh, corruption in healthcare and educational system. And this will ensure that resources are effectively allocated and effectively utilized. The second thing I want to address quickly is the aspect of awareness and empowerment. This is where I want to say, when it comes to uh, education, sharing information, when it comes to empowering people within the community, I think it's important that we put into consideration the needs and rights of every person. And this means even persons with, persons with disability need to be included, they need to be had, they need to be empowered because they, they have the potential, just like any other human being, to support uh, in implementation of programs from planning, from ideation, to the implementation, even to the oversight. And this speaks mostly at, uh, on the aspects of budget focus at the county level. We look at the financial plans. If we don't have these persons presented effectively, their needs might not be looked into effectively. The third thing I want to look at is the aspect of inclusivity uh, in policy development. We understand that we cannot do, we might have, not we cannot, uh, Many a times it's difficult to implement programs and projects if we don't have uh, communicative policies, if we don't have uh, contextualized policies. So if we have advocacy efforts that will be ensure, will be able to ensure that uh, governments and institutions involve women and girls with disabilities in policy ideation, policy development, policy implementation, policy reviews, and also policy oversights. It will be easy and it will ensure that policies are inclusive and consider the unique needs of each and every person, including women and girls with disabilities. So for me, I think uh, to finalize this, I, I want to say that we need to really work towards seeing each and every person as an important person on the table when it comes to development programs within our society. And this means creating a slot and creating a platform that enables each and every person to enjoy themselves and feel comfortable, feel like they have a beautiful and empowering environment to just enjoy and also be able to uh, participate and contribute towards the development of our nation. And as, as I finalize, maybe I just want to highlight a few things here, and uh, these are specific things, uh, strategies that we can use to ensure that uh, we raise awareness and promote inclusion and anti-corruption efforts. And one of the strategies we can use is uh, media campaigns. We can also do education and training. We can also do community engagement, especially community engagement, which includes uh, development and sharing of, uh, of stories and best practices. This will be able to move the community. This will be able to change the attitudes of the community. And finally, the aspect of collaborative advocacy where we're having all partners coming together, irrespective of the, our different objectives, irrespective of our different visions. But if we come together, we shall be able to ensure that each and every person is included effectively. We shall be able to ensure that we are having um, programs that are effectively, or are, are effectively accounted for when it comes to implementation, when it comes to resource allocation. And this will, in turn, on the larger perspective, uh, limit the opportunities for things like corruption, which has negatively impacted the lives of persons with disability, especially women and girls. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Innocent, for the wonderful presentation. And uh, key things that I've noted, I was looking when you talk about protection and you talk about inclusivity, but I'm looking at protection in an aspect of health because you talk about uh, sexual reproductive health and rights. So when you talk about corruption, how does it hinder our protection as young women with disabilities in the society? And also, um, great that you're also talking about the community engagement. And I can attest that disability has been in that. And also, by from what you're saying, 
sponsored a confirmation that this is a very important approach that must be used with regards to just a cabin corruption when we talk about access to health. Thank you so much, Innocent, and uh, we really appreciate for your presentation. I hope it was very impactful. If you have a question, uh, members, uh, kindly note them down and we'll give them at the end of the presentation. So I'll invite the next speaker who is Vera. And uh, kindly, I'm now uh, just reminding our speakers that uh, let's keep time when presenting so that we allow everybody to have uh, an elaborate uh, time to present uh, their presentation. Thank you so much and uh, welcome Vera. Thank you, Vilda, for giving me this opportunity. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, I want to go direct to my point number one. Uh, point number one about the effect of corruption is the access to services. Uh, you see, when uh, maybe a woman or a girl with a disability uh, goes to a, a health center or maybe a Oduma center uh, to request for service, she will be she will be told to to give some bribe so to fasten the process, uh, which is very wrong. Uh, then point number two is education. Uh, you see, these our ed teachers may be principals. Uh, for them to admit uh, maybe a student with a disability, it's very hard. So if they do that, they want more than that fee of a normal person, claiming that the work of uh, this disability student, uh, maybe it's very hard. But when you follow how they use that money, uh, they use it for their own benefit. And even they do not care. Maybe to look at even the loose, uh, you find that they are not clean for those persons to access them. So it may bring all uh, about diseases uh, like STIs. Uh, then uh, point number three is uh, in employment sector. You see, when somebody goes to look for employment, most of persons with disability women, uh, they will judge them with their disability, which is very wrong. They should look at their ability. Uh, and if they are absorbed for work, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are requested for certain amount huh, to, in order to employ them. So this uh, uh, gives uh, maybe the, the people with disability, most of women, they will be fearing to, to go and search for the employment, maybe after the experience uh, and uh, she, uh, if he, she uh, even share with her friend and uh, her friend will actually lose hope. Uh, then point number four is uh, about uh, security. You know, uh, uh, it, is, it is a fundamental challenge. Uh, uh, a woman, uh, uh, women with disability, need security you, you you see the in the case that uh, uh, she she can be raped uh, and then when going to report this case uh, the police uh, the police will will judge will judge her huh, negatively uh, maybe the police will not uh, say this case is right because uh, uh, he will assume that nobody can do that huh? and then you find that the the perpetrator will give bribe and then uh, the case is cancelled. Uh, then uh, an another point, which is the last, is violation of rights. Uh, uh, you see, violation of rights, uh, maybe that, uh, that woman, hmm? that woman, maybe somebody violates her rights. But again, uh, when she goes to report, uh, uh, maybe a police, maybe she finds um, a police officer, a man, and uh, she cannot believe that uh, uh, a woman with disability can be raped. Uh, and then still, bribe will appear to vandalize the case. And this case will not be heard. 
so violation of right this this woman his right will be violated thank you oh wow thank you very much uh vera and uh, we really appreciate uh, your time your presentation and also just uh, bringing it up from a point of maybe experience of uh, women with disabilities. Uh, just to read something that we had on the chat from Regina. So Regina said, uh, no more in, uh, in quotes, we are all no more Madame Vera. Maybe we say able-bodied or regular, uh, thank you. Uh, I hope that is noted, but then something that I want to say in regards to that, uh, we believe that it's a learning process and we get to learn on daily basis. Uh, yeah, and it, it's also good to accept uh, correction. Yeah, I, I believe maybe one day we'll have uh, a session just talking about disability etiquette so that we can get to understand which are the best uh, terms we can use when referring to such and, uh, and such a person so that maybe we don't have uh, issues and then also uh when vera was presenting something that uh, i was looking at was a uh, reasonable accommodation and uh when you talk about corruption and reasoning about uh, reasonable accommodation for example at the health facilities whom do we hold accountable the, is it only from the maybe the ministry of health the entire government and uh, what role do we play even us when you talk about corruption because when you talk about the reasonable accommodation, for, for example, Vera talked about maybe the, the toilet at the facility, but you realize uh, most times we, young women with disabilities, we are not there during all that process. At the end of it, then we come at the end of it, but now not there when now, for example, during the budget processes, were we there to talk about the reasonable accommodation because uh, we need to make everybody understand and maybe sometimes just uh, an oversight from uh, somewhere because we didn't speak about something. So maybe an advocacy also, we need to be present in uh, every step so that uh, we don't get to be left behind even as we talk about the aspect of corruption. Thank you so much, Vera. Allow me to uh, welcome our next speaker who is uh, Immaculate. Immaculate, kindly proceed. And uh, we hope that you'll keep up with the time given. Thank you. Thank you, Milda. I'll try as much as possible. Okay. Can you hear me, Vilda? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you so much. I'll try as much as possible to keep up with the time. I had an elaborate uh, preparation over the topics that I would like to present. I'll go straight to the point. My first topic was increased vulnerability, how corruption increases vulnerability of women with disability. Um, vulnerability is susceptibility to risk. So if vulnerability is, um, together, comes together with hazard, then that is a disaster. So women with disability are already at risk. So different uh, activities that are conducted or atrocities conducted against their lives increases their vulnerability. These vulnerabilities manifest in different sectors. This has been mentioned by my fellow presenters. The first one is healthcare sector, educational sector, economic and um, economic sector, uh, social, social and welfare services sectors. Yeah, um, just going to elaborate on uh, healthcare. My points were, I had three key points. That was to elaborate ways in which corruption leads to uh, vulnerability of women with disabilities. Then number two was to share on real life cases that I have handled of women who have faced discrimination. Um, a report given or uh, conducted by World Health Organization in 2017 elaborated that uh, uh, discrimination in healthcare services. Discrimination in healthcare services 
increases the vulnerability of women with disabilities. This discrimination manifests and in such a way that the funds allocated for uh, healthcare services are diverted to different activities or to people's pockets. And this way, you know, we know women with disabilities or individuals with disabilities require specialized care through assistive devices, uh, attention care. So when these funds that are meant for such activities are, are squandered by other people, then these women are not able to get the services that they require. Uh, Transparency, in, in Transparency International Kenya conducted in a study in 2019. And they also found out that corruption in healthcare system in Kenya as, 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 um, as exposed women with disability to a lot of vulnerability, they are not able to be attended to the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the second point is educational sector. You know, education is empowerment. We are saying we want to empower women with disabilities. We don't just begin, we don't just talk about healthcare, we talk about education. These people are just the way uh, my fellow members uh, elaborated or made it clear that we are normal, they are normal. So just like, just like other people, they're supposed to be empowered through education. But you find out that uh, the, the infrastructure, the facilities um, that, um, Educational facilities do not have this, do not portray these inclusivities. In, in that, let's say the romp, the, the stairs, the, the, the structures of the classrooms, the activities that are, they, they put into place does not, in quotes, are not inclusive as they, they call them or they perceive them to be. Another thing is uh, uh, access to social services and welfare. Uh, UN has conducted a study in 2019 that demonstrated that corruption can increase or can reduce the effectiveness of social safety nets. Social safety nets are non-governmental organization, Christian organization that work closely with the government to provide the human security. So when there is corruption in these sectors, it hinders the effectiveness in offering these services. And women with disabilities and the marginalized group suffer a lot because they are not attended to the way they are supposed to be attended to. Uh, even in Kenya, the NSSF is uh, in, their, in their policy, you find that they, they advocate and they work towards providing services to everybody, everybody including people with disabilities. However, it is so difficult for these women with disability to be included in their services. The corruption, the corruption, the corrupt practices of ways or means of identifying people who are supposed to benefit from these services hinders them from attending to women. And secondly, I would like to share how, how vulnerability has affected the, the as few cases or has manifested Yeah, well, okay. Our, our vulnerability has affected women. Our corruption has affected women um, with disability. I, I have handled a few cases. I recently, I think two months ago, I was called uh, to go talk to a lady who was in denial because she can't accept a child. She's living with, she's disabled, but uh, she was defiled, apparently with a family member. So she was in, a, in denial, but this case in the future, like nobody wants to talk about it because apparently it's a family case and the local, local authorities are aware of it and that they've been bribed and they are not allowed to talk about it. So this girl cannot talk about it. She's, she doesn't know how to deal with the baby. And uh, so such cases, you see the local authority who is supposed to protect and champion for the right of these ladies are already bribed and there is nothing they can do. And I was even warned not to talk about it leaving that place. My other point was decreased trust in health systems. 
any person who has faced discrimination or who has, who has felt like uh, somebody is trying to dehumanize them, who don't want to be in such a position again. Having gone to health sectors or health systems that does not acknowledge women with a disability as, as people who are supposed to be attended to just the same way they attend to other people, reduces their trust in these health sectors. Nobody would want to be, to be exposed to such a uh, discrimination or once or twice. That's uh, just another case. I, I, I had a, a client who was pregnant, seven months pregnant, but she hadn't gone for cl the clinic because when she went for the first time, the nurse mentioned in a local language, thinking she was not understanding that, why would people who cannot take care of themselves bring other people to be in this world? So you see, that already is telling somebody that you're not supposed to be here, you're not supposed to do this. So such things, uh, such discrimination in us, uh, in us, uh, or increases, decreases trust of women with disability in health sectors means ways of uh, curbing this. As organizations, uh, we should re-evaluate the existing policies. Yeah, find out the gap. Okay, Josephine, I'll say to chat you after the, after the presentation. Find out the gaps. Where do we have policies uh, that are not working? We have for policies for the recognition. They are there, but they are not working. And again, uh, let us try to empower these girls. Let them know that they are worth their attention. They are worth living in this world. They are worth living in this world because mm, if they are empowered, they will know their rights. They will know not to keep quiet when they are discriminated. They will know not to keep quiet when somebody has uh, uh violated their rights and uh yeah thank you so much thank you so much Maculate, for the wonderful presentation i was just trying to think about the stories that you are bringing on board but then it's uh unfortunate that we are in a society where uh, persons with disability are viewed as uh, asexual people. And even uh, somebody uh, getting pregnant is something that is viewed to be abnormal or something that needs to be talked about because the fact that somebody says people who cannot take care of children bring another person, then it means also your rights have been violated and also somebody getting to judge you because of maybe the disability that you have. But then I was also trying to check from the constitution where we have the article 54 that talks about the rights of persons with disability. And uh, uh, I saw somebody side chat you, I hope it's uh, something that uh, maybe can be discussed also so that even uh, other people can get help in regards to what you're talking about, as we talk about being uh, corruption in the society. So allow me to welcome our next presenter, who is uh, Maureen. Maureen, kindly take the stage and uh, give us your presentation. And just a reminder again, I hope you keep up with the time given. Thank you. Maureen. Uh, can can you confirm you can hear me? Maybe Andrews. any voice? Yes, yes. Hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, is everyone hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay, I'll go straight to the to my points. And when we we hear about women, first of all, the the name women or girls with us with disability, that is raising a lot of alarming in our country because women are the pillars of the family, and 
as much as they are disabled, those women are breadwinners and with, with, with in their families. And as the way we as 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 sex workers organization, that is we deal with female sex workers. Sometimes when we go to street or or on the hotspot doing mapping, we also meet women who are disabled and are trying to to, to, to make things work in their home or to find out how, how their kids are going to be fed in a day or paying even their bills. So those women, sometimes we get them are being violated and they are, good, they are being abused by clients. Even uh, they are not getting payment. People are using them on the street without payment. And the barrier to equal of women and girls with disability in our country is getting higher because of these women, they cannot access healthcare services, even making decision on family planning. For example, if a woman who is in, 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 a, in, dis in disability, maybe she has got married and she has maybe two kids, um, she can't even access to take herself to healthcare and get the right time to, to, to access the family planning debt. So this past, this, 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 this woman, it, 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 she, she will be depending on someone else to take her on the facility. So that makes them not to, to, to access the right time of getting the family planning and even and also legal capacity on accessing um, funding on disability right to recognize everywhere as person before the law before the law and also um, when it's come to women uh, all of us uh, would like to get married in future despite we are girls will reach a point whereby we, we want to get married and have families. So no man will 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 accept to 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 marry um, a pastor, a woman who is a disabled. So in another category we get that those women are isolated somewhere and they feel like they are not um, they are not even human being for the for the society. And also when it comes to our monthly period as women, you get those women are struggling to get even their, their pads, nowhere to access the pad, nowhere to access funding to buy those pads. No one can go and buy for, for her. So she will, be, she, she will be there for maybe a day without getting the, um, the pads. Also, another thing that women women with the disability and girls facing its families our families are the one who are are perpetrators for us they are discriminating the women with disability because if you want them to help you maybe raising the kid maybe that woman as deliver her baby no one wants to help you take care of the baby your family are discriminating you you feel like I'm not the part of the family. So you decide to walk out on that family and go outside, start another life of which going outside, it's uh, another risk of you be discriminated outside there. And hello guys, are you getting me? Yes, we can hear you, yes. Okay, other thing, it's yeah. our neighbor, neighborhood. Uh, for example, if a uh, disciple, like the way um, where I live now, we have a, 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 a woman who is a disabled. And sometimes this woman is discriminated when she wants to fetch water. No one give, give her um, opportunity to be, to be the first to fetch water and go. Even if she wants to do something, people are like, unasumbua sana, mm? unasumbua sana na hizi ukiwete yako. So, 
sometimes I feel for her like, oh God, uh, she wants to, 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 to even go, go away go away yani atoke upside penye sisi tuko another way if another thing is um, if a girl is a disciple and and she's in in school or workplace or even that woman uh, she can be eradicated if they adapt inclusive practice that bring out potential in young girls and women with disability so or uh, in our workplace and schools. Mm, other, 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 other students can discriminate that girl that you are disabled. They don't want to help, it, to help her to, to, to do school acquires like cleaning, toilets, the teachers even discriminating her, no support. Yeah, other thing is mm, about corruption in our country. We know our country, we have funding for, we, we have funding for, or, for, for disabled people. And these fundings for disabled person or disabled woman and, and, and girls to get that money is, is not easy in our country. By the time the, man, the money has been, has been released, the real people that are disabled they are not going to 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 get that money because they we have other people that they snatch that money before it reaches on the ground and um, other other thing is about sorry i've lost myself of oh, freedom Freedom. They don't have freedom. Their self-esteem are low. Are, are, are low. Uh, they 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 don't determine they determine their self. And according to body autonomy and the rights of women, your body you display your body the way you want. And if you are a disabled person, people think that you are crazy. You can't even uh, display your body the way you want, and you have your right to display your body. So that shows that people with disability, their self-esteem are, are low, and they, they are discriminated by families, neighborhood, even our country, even our government, and even our children. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate it. I, I hope you are still learning. If I was in a position, I'll invite all members to maybe just clap for you and just uh, appreciate you in a better way. But allow me to do it for all of you who have represented here. I hope you're having a great uh, presentation. As we move on, uh, as we are doing introduction for our amazing speakers, one of us did not introduce herself. And uh, we can now give her opportunity before she presents, she'll tell us maybe introduce herself and then uh, tell, her, tell us what she does or, and also where she's coming from. Then we kindly request you, Sophie, to proceed with the presentation. Thank you, kindly go ahead. Thank you. My name is Sophia Mbeyela. I'm a executive director of Peace Life for Person with Disability Foundation. I am a woman with disability from Tanzania. So I want to present um, in a few points, because another point my other, other presenter they present. So in, a, in the area of corruption, corruption affects women with disability in many areas. Uh, first of my point is social services. In a part of social services, in adequate of social services, corruption with social safety can lead to the uh, location of funds in instead 
to support individual with disability. This can result in a lack of accessibility, transport, housing, and other es essential services of women with disability. So due to the collapsion uh, caused lack of social safety for the woman with disability in many areas. That is the first point. The second point is violence and exploration. Corruption, contribute, corruption can contribute to the culture of input where, where, where of the violence and the exploration against the woman and the dis of disability are not held accountable. This can create a climate of fear and vulnerable. So due to the corruption, the in the part of violence, the woman with disability then increase more violence in the society, more than other, other women. The second point is access to justice. Uh, this point is say about the access to justice. Legal system may tied by corruption, making it difficult for women with disability to seek justice in the case of abuse, discrimination, or rights of variation. The last point is lack of political representation. Corruption can hinder, can hinder the politica, political presentation of managerizing group, include women with disability, their voice may not be heard in decision-making process, led to police that due to address their unique needs. In summary, corruption can exploit the challenge faced by women with disability, limiting the access to, to essential services education, employment, and justice, while also increasing their vulnerability to violence and discrimination. Addressing corruption is curricular to improve their lives ex experience of this managerizing group. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Madam Sophie, for the wonderful presentation. And uh, we really appreciate also that you are able to join us and also share with us uh, your points. So I'll go back to the chats. Madam Annette said, uh, saying that people who cannot take care of themselves, bringing others also brings up another barrier called attitudinal barrier. He Nisumu. In Isumu, an effort to ensure that uh, women with disabilities access reproductive health services. Thank you so much. And uh, back to our audience, I invite you, maybe if you have a question that you can post on the chat box, we will really appreciate because you're going to ask uh, these questions after the last uh, session or the last uh, presenters that we have. So if you have any question, kindly put it on the chat box. Uh, our Able speakers will take up the question relevant, and then also you'll get answers in regards to that. Uh, moving to another session, uh, I see our mentors in the house, and I call them mentors because uh, when uh, Veronica was talking, she talked about Mama Siri. And of course, when you talk about young people, uh, we know that we have young people in the house, but also we need to recognize that we have our mama series. So among the mama series, I can also proudly say that I have one of my mentors among the mama series whom we have in the house. And we'll talk about the toll free numbers. I believe they have been uh, helping a number of people and kindly find time and also visit the disability website and you'll get to interact with uh, amazing documentation, amazing presentation also from the Mama Siri. So in this juncture, we are going to have our Mama Siri. Uh, they're going to present something to us in regard to their lived experiences. When you talk about Mama, we recognize that that is a mother in, 
in in English, but also Mama is a uh, a mother in the Kiswahili. So I really appreciate that they are here with us, and I also appreciate that they are also mentoring us in regards to this uh, work. And also just uh, getting to hold each other's hand because we understand that the advocacy work is not all about maybe build alone, but it requires a collaborative effort and everybody in the house. So kindly allow me to invite our mama series and uh, they're going to talk about their lived experience, but uh, I'm going to give them maybe some time so that uh, we can hear from all of them. And uh, our first uh, presenter is going to be Mama Regina, who is going to talk to us about corruption in businesses. Kindly, Mama Regina, our Mama Siri, kindly proceed. Hello, uh, Minish. Yes, I'm joining you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name, is, my name is Regina Chumba. Mama Siri was in Gishu County. I truly want to appreciate the presentation that we've had before. Uh, it's truly motivating, encouraging, and very educative. I've learned a lot personally, and uh, I wish to share with you because uh, we are in the ground. We work with uh, women with disabilities, women and girls in the, with the disabilities in the ground and we know what they are going through. Yes, we may not be able to capture everything, but in their everyday life, there are things that cut across. Uh, for example, uh, those women who are in business world, those women with disabilities who are in business world within uh, the city centers, you realize, you saw what happened sometimes back that was going around in social media, women with disabilities, and Tulumiwa, and uh, I would say that uh, those women with disabilities and uh, having businesses within the CBD go through a lot in the hands of the county Ascaris, for example, if there's a designated place for women with disabilities or for any other person who has disabilities that's meant for them to do their businesses, these Kanjos will always come to them that we are not parting with anything, then you'll not be allowed to do your business here. Or maybe you are a woman who is using a wheelchair and maybe wherever you are, it's not user friendly. So for you to be allowed to do your everyday business, you have to part with something small. And this is corruption of the highest order. And we have not been able to eradicate. So I, 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 I'm just saying that uh, women and girls with disabilities go through a lot. Those who are doing business, even... Um, for you to load and offload your merchandise, whatever you are selling, they'll hike the prices. And like those other persons, at all when you're on a paper, they'll always say, who you last at the poker? And you have to pay because you don't have an alternative. You don't, you're not, your ability is not like for the others. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh for sharing that. Uh, to our next Mama Siri, I just want to recognize that uh, disability is so deliberate that we also have the sign language interpreter on board so that everybody can get to get this information that we are sharing. We are leaving no one behind in regards to this call. So I'm inviting um, Mama Siri by the name uh, Salim, to share with us on access uh, to healthcare by deaf uh, patients. Kindly go ahead. Thank you. Asante. Mimi kwa majina ni Tawhida Sali kutoka Kwale County. Ni mmoja wa mama Siri. Mimi ningependa kuongelea kuhusu afya. Kwa sababu ni vitu ambavyo vinatusikitisha na kuta katika hospitali ni kitu ambacho kipo si hati cha kutunga ni vitu ambavyo vime tumevipitia unapata msichana ni deaf amekuja kwa hosi kutaka family planning akifika hapo yule daktari aliyo kazi anajaribu ku, kumkwepa kwa sababu hamuelewi vile anataka kitu gani anataka so wewe ambaye umemsindikiza ukijaribu kumuelimisha na kwamba eh, unajua una, una, nina take time kumuelimisha kutaka kujua huyu anataka huduma gani 
but tunaona niko na patients wengi kwa hiyo mtanisubiri nimalize hao haraka haraka sasa wewe umeenda pale na mda wako lakini anakuwa na wewe mzigo pale lakini mwisho wa siku anakuambia si ufanye maarifa basi unapeana kitu kidogo na sasa inakubidi upeane tu kuna jinsi unapeana kama ni mia na, na tayari uko tayari kusikiliza lakini bila hivyo hawezi kumsikiliza msichana ambaye ni deaf ndio maana huwa tunapiga kinyume sana kila kwa hizi facilities kuwe na sign language interpreter kwa sababu most of them wanapata shida sana hawa deaf na ndio wanakosa huduma pia mimi ningeochilia hapo asante Asante sana kwa eh Kiswahili ni ngumu kwangu kwa kusijali. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for that presentation. But then I'll move to our next Mama Siri. I hope if you're still on the call you can hear from what our amazing Mama Siri are talking about. And if you're following, I'm also seeing some question on the chat box, which I'm also I followed up with my presenters and I hope you are picking the relevant questions. But I'll find time, then I read them out um, to you, all of you. Then I'm moving to our next presenter. For a long time, we are talking about the inclusive education. We don't want to be secluded. We don't want to be... We are persons with disabilities, so many a times I believe that this uh, fight for the inclusive education is something that we are still even advocating for today because, yes, we appreciate some gaps have been addressed, but we are still pushing on to get what we really want in regards to that. And we say that uh, disability is not inability. And we when you talk about education, we are also educated and we are also doing our part mm -hmm. as the citizens of Kenya. So in regards to that, I'm inviting uh, Madam uh, Josephine, maybe to kindly share with us on something to do with assessment and education. Thank you and welcome Madam Josephine. Thank you. Sorry. 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 Assessment, kama mzazi ama kama mwanamke mlemavu, huko kwa ground kumekuwa na challenge kwa sababu ya kuenda kufanya kupata mambo na assessment. Ukijaribu kutembea na mtoto kuenda kwa assessment, unaweza tembea ta hospitali tatu nne. Na at the end of the day, mtoto akifanyiwa assessment, unatumwa shule ya mbali. Hiyo shule ya mbali, hawa mwanamke mlemavu, hawezi afford kuenda mpaka huko na aende aweke mahitaji ya school fees pale ukijaribu kuulizia zaidi unakuta unaambiwa kama unataka shule ya karibu lazima utoe kitu kidogo ndio tubadilisha hiyo jina ya mtoto ikuje ile shule yenye unataka ya karibu na wewe hiyo imekuwa challenge kubwa sana kwa ground mpaka inabidi watoto wengi hawawezi kusoma kwa sababu wazazi wale mavu ni haki yetu kupata watoto kuzaa tuitwe wazazi tuitwe mama lakini huyu mtoto atasoma aje kile kidogo unayo unajituma hapati huduma karibu na wewe kwa sababu ya hiyo maneno ya corruption lazima utoe kitu kidogo ndio uende for example kama mimi nilikuwa na mtoto nikampeleka shule na ni mlemavu mimi pia ni mlemavu niliambiwa lazima nitoe kitu kidogo ndio huyo mtoto nipewe transfer from nakuru to kajiado kama sita toa kitu kidogo haya mtoto akae pale pale na amefanyiwa assessment kajiado so imekuwa challenge secondly maneno ya education watoto wale mavu tuna mwanamke mlemavu na msichana mlemavu anafaa kuwa ako educated ndiye ajijue yeye ni nani na ndiye ajue haki zake aweze kusipigania baadaye lakini imekuwa ngumu kwa sababu as long as you are not educated hakuna mali utaenda Ukijaribu kuenda pale ukiongea Kiswahili yako ama lugha ya nyumbani na wale wakiongea kizungu yao hapo hapo ndio umebaki. So imekuwa challenge kubwa sana na hizo mashule ziko very expensive kuna county zingine hazina hata special school hata moja. Hata moja. So inabidi watoto watumwe mbali. So imekuwa challenge kubwa sana maneno ya assessment na maneno ya education kwa ground so tungeomba tu Mungu atusaidie 
ndio tukue educated ndio wale wa ground pia tuwa educate wajue haki zao asante mm. asante sana mama sivi and uh, nimeshukuru sana i'm struggling with kiswahili lakini utaniwia radhi kwa leo <laughs> So the next one I'm going to invite our mama Siri who is Madam uh, Florence uh, one of our presenters uh, sorry one of our presenters uh, while presenting maybe allow me consent that uh, I can uh, mention your name uh, that is our presenter Immaculate talked about the cases of rape in the society but then also I'm glad that we have Mama Siri who is Madam Florence who can share with us especially on the reporting of cases of the perpetrators and uh, now what happens yeah maybe Madam uh, Florence is it, if you can hear me kindly go ahead thank you habari jana nzuri mimi ndo Madam Florence Mama Siri Mombasa mimi nitasimama upande wa kesi ya mwanamke mlemavu na msichana mlemavu upande wa kama SGBV ile njia ambayo inapitia tunaanza na kwa mzee wa mtaa twende kwa chifu hatuwezi kufaulu kwa sababu hatuna chochote kwa mkono kwa mfano mtoto amekuwa rape ambaye ni mlemavu msichana unaenda unaanza na kwa mzee wa mtaa uende kwa chifu ukiwa hauna chochote pale hufaulu uende polisi uende hata hospitali iwe ile pesi imepita vizuri huko kwa daktari uende kwa askari askari yule mtu anaweza shikwa akawekwa ndani pengine siku kadhaa alafu akaachiliwa kwa sababu huna chochote pale ile mtu ametoa pesa alafu baadaye anaachiliwa kwa sababu anajua we hauna pesa kupeana pale sasa ile shida corruption ya Kenya imeanzia pale kwa kwanza kwanza mtaa paka kotini kwenyewe kwa sababu hatuna uwezo wa kuwa tunaizalipa sisi mi mwenyewe naongea niko na kesi ambayo wakili ana pesa zangu ameshikilia hizi na nimeenda paka kwa compliance na bado hiyo kesi haijapita nikapatiwa pesa zangu hao watu ni watu wengine ambao wanafanya sisi wale mavu mwanamke mle mavu hana njia ya kwenda mahali popote ama msichana mle mavu hana njia ya kwenda popote niko na kesi ya msichana ambayo alikuwa rep 11 years yule mtu ameshikwa ambaye amemrepo ni 47 akawa kwa ndani siku nne alafu akatolewa paka saa hii tunahangaika hii kesi angalau iwe tasonga lakini kila atakapoenda tunaambiwa ngoja kila atakapoombea unaambiwa ngoja kwa sababu hakuna akili ambayo tunaweza kupeana sasa hiyo corruption ni mbaya sana kwa sababu inanzia pale kwa mzoa mtaa polisi paka kotini kwa hivyo ndio sababu sisi tunakuwa tu saa yote tuna tunataka tuwe kuna njia ya kuwa tu na tunazasaidika angalau tusivyo pale lakini corruption ni nyingi sana ya kuwa paka utoe kitu ndio kisha kuwe sawa bila hivyo kesi yako haiendi popote inaisha ya vile vile wakati mwingine unaweza kama kule kwa chifu unaweza ambiwa tuta ya kuwa tuma zungumzo nyumbani wewe mzazi kama ni mwenye mtoto wako amekuwa repu unaweza hii ambiwe ni ukubali hapa hata kama ni kitu kidogo ifanywe hapa ishie hapa na inaende na isha hivyo na ni kitu ambacho msichana amekuwa repu labda yule mtu atakuwa na magonjwa yake amempatia ugonjwa ndivyo inavyoenda kwa mwanamke mlemavu na kwa msichana mlemavu hakuna pale mahali kesi yake naenda ikiwe taenda mahali pake shinde basi ni lazima tungangane paka yani tuhakikishe labda kuna kitu fulani kimepeana kule bila kupeana kitu hakuna kesi inaenda popote asante sana ni hayo asante sana kwa your presentation and you're talking about solidarity together which is a very important point when we talk about addressing the corruption so uh, allow me read the chat uh, kulikuwa na swali ambao namlenga um, Maureen so Maureen as our presenter maybe as you prepare you can there was a question from Annette which says kindly can Maureen explain what uh, she meant by saying women with disability display their bodies i think uh, you can take that and then uh, there was also a question from uh, Josephine uh, Josephine is asking hi everyone mama akitolewa titi ama zote huyo ni mlemavu i think we'll get to answer that also and then also the next uh, the next one is 
uh, corruption affect the right uh, to personal freedom, dignity, and self-expression of women and girls with intellectual and psychological disability. Their privacy is violated. Uh, I totally agree with this. And uh, thank you so much for sharing this, uh, Winfred. So allow me move to our next uh, presenter, which is uh, Mama Annette. So as we talk about Mama Siri, Mama Annette is one of the Mama Series, and uh, she can share with us when you talk about the reporting of cases, when you have cases in the society, we do hear about IPOA, and um, maybe we might assume that everybody knows about it. So Mama Annette maybe can just uh, elaborate to us what uh, really IPOA means, and what really uh, is the work of IPOA and other relevant uh, organization in regards to uh, curbing the corruption that we are trying to address as a family today. Yes, uh, Karibu Sana Mama Anet. Uh, kindly confirm if you can hear me, anybody? We can hear you. I don't know whether Mama Net is in the house or uh... okay. Maybe if we give Mama Hanet uh, some time, then uh, we are going to move to our next Mama Siri, who is Madam Hilda. So Madam Hilda, our presenter has also brought it uh, on broad light that. We talk about accessibility, reasonable accommodation. So we also invite uh, Mama Hilda to talk about accessible facilities and hospital when you talk about women and girls with disability as a matter of uh, facilitating uh, the curbing of corruption in the society. Karibu sana, Mama Hilda. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, Abar. Mzuri sana ni. Network manenos. Oh, eh, di kweli. Eh, waji jina la ama Tanzanet. Moche anete ndile. Eh? Okay. Simu niache ni malizi. So mimi nitashare kidogo kulingana na experience yangu katika uwanja nikifanya kazi ya kuhamasisha wanawake wale mavu ku access services za uh, sector reproductive health services katika kali zetu. So uh, I want to share one uh, one case which I was handling whereby a nine-year-old uh, special needs child had been defiled by a known person. And uh, at this point, there was nobody who was willing to come out and uh, bear witness of what they saw. Many people had seen, but they were not ready kukuja kusema kila ambacho waliona. So ikawa ningumu, nikakazana kama mama siri, nikaenda police station, E, kesi ilikuwa ime, imeshtakiwa walimu wa, wa hiyo shule special needs wanasema tu oh haki ya mtoto ipatikane haki ya mtoto ipatikane so ilinitia nguvu kuingia katika kituo cha polisi nikapata kwamba e, kesi ilikuwa imeripotiwa watu wa kutoa ushahidi wamejitolea lakini wanasema ya kwamba mradi tu polisi wasi wa expose so they came out wakapeana ushahidi lakini investigating officer investigating officer alikuwa amekatu lakini kama singetoka na hiyo force ambayo nilitoka nayo kwa sababu investigating officer alikuwa ananiambia tu hakuna watu wa ushahidi hakuna mashahidi ambao walishuhudia so hiyo kesi kama singejitokeza kuja kupaza sauti ya huyu mtoto msichana mlemavu e, ingelala tu hivyo so nilipotoka nilisaidiwa na IPOA kwa sababu nilipojaribu nilijaribu sana kusukuma OCS akuwa anafanya kitu investigating officer was not doing the right thing 
So at the point where Ipoa had to come in, na waka piga simu kwa hiyo police station, waka pigia OCS, waka pigia commandant. By evening, the perpetrator alikuwa meshikwa. Mashahidi walikuja kutua ushahidi baada ya huyu mtoto, huyu, huyu msichana, baada ya, baada ya huyu jama kushikwa, the perpetrator kushikwa. So it brings out clearly that uh, actually eh, walemavu wako na shida. Ulipa, unapata kwamba maybe the stigma part kwa sababu ya wazazi kuwa na mtoto mlemavu ilikuwa inafanya kulingana na vile the first presenter alisema the stigma part inafanya hawa wazazi wasijitokeze kwa ajili ya kutaka kudai haki ya huyu mtoto ah kwa um, kwa njia nyingine tena utasema maybe hawako wanajitokeza kusukuma haya maneno kwa sababu walikuwa wanalaka wana lack knowledge eh? no, na, jinsi the first presenter brought it up those are some of the barriers actually zenye zinafanya corruption inakita mizizi katika community especially kwa wanawake wale mabu wakitaka kwa access hizo services kuingia hospitali husitana akaingia hospitali alikuwa amerarudiwa ame present na fistula so kuingia pale hospitali familia ilikuwa dhaifu the economic barrier coming up so wakawa hawawezi hata ku, ku, kulipa bill so mimi mama siri nilikimbia kwa administrator nikasema kuna njia tatu za kulipa hawa wazazi tukiangalia hawana hata kitu cha kusema kwamba wataweza kuuza wataweza kufanya ili walipe hizi pesa pole pole ni familia ambayo ni dhaifu tukisema kwamba eh, eh, ati kuna njia ta, njia tatu. So nikasema njia tatu hizo zote mbili hazifanyi. Lakini moja ya kuwave bila wao kulipa chochote itawasaidia kwa sababu ni familia dhaifu. So nilingangana hivyo kama mama siri ndio nikapata lakini mama mtoto alikuwa amekaa hospitali, alipona, alidischargewa, imefika dakika ya kutoka haiwezekani. So the bill was waived. So I give myself a credit because eh, I had the knowledge and which these people did not have ndio ikafanya kumsichana mlemavu akaweza kusaidika kiki kesi nyingine kwa ni about a, an albi, a lady with albinism ambaye alikuwa amepresent na cancer hilo titi lilikatwa hatimaye so kulingana na vile nilikuwa nimerefa huyu mama akaenda pale hospitali akawa referred to another higher facility which she could not even manage na fair na kila kitu. So nili because of having knowledge ambayo huyu mama alikuwa hana, nika approach National Council. National Council walikuwa wamewahi nisaidia wakati mwingine wakati ambapo nilikuwa na mlemavu ambaye alikuwa na albinism na mguu kama umeoza hakuna mtu wa kumsaidia. So huyu mama aliweza kusaidika kupitia kwa E, ku national council ambao waliingilia kati wakaketa waka for the bill yote kila kitu walishughulikia so unapata kweli jinsi presenters wetu watano wamesema kuna maswala mengi ambayo wanawake na wasichana wale mabu wanapitia unapata kwamba hawawezi kuzikujia hizi hizi huduma kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa ukosefu wa mawasiliano ukosefu wa hiyo wamejitia aibu kwa sababu ya ulemavu wao hawawezi wanatritiwa inhumanly wana hizo pesa hawana limited access to knowledge inafanya unoja sasa inafanya wangi wetu tunahangaika so najipea heko kwa sababu ni ukweli kama singepaza sauti ya huyu mchana mlemavu asua sana yule wa miaka mitisa angepata kusaidika sasa hivi alishonwa yuko sawa yuko na wazazi wake na hata wazazi wake usalama wao ni kautilia mkazo because huyo jamaa alikuwa apunguliwe aachiliwe kwa bond lakini kwa sababu ya huo usalama nilipaza sauti ya huyu nikawaambia eh, judiciary nikawaambia a a ikiwa huyu jamaa atatoka usalama wa hii familia huko hatarini so alikaa ndani hadi vile kesi iliamuliwa na ndiye akaanza kitengo so wakati mwingine lack of knowledge inafanya tunahangaika Nifike hapo. 
Asante sana Mama Hanet. Na yeah. tunashukuru sana kwa kazi nzuri ambayo unafanya kwa society. Kwa yeah. hivyo mtani ruhusu ni mwalike Mama Siri mwenzetu ambaye mm. alikuwa anafaa kuja next. Na kwa hivyo namuita Mama Hilda. Mama Hilda karibu na pia ningependa kuwakumbusha kuwa tuko tu na dakika uh, mawili wakati ambao tuna uh, pre- present asante sana Mama Hilda, karibu. Uh, uh, asanteni. Kama bado tunamgoja Mama Hilda, maybe I'll welcome Mama Recho. Oh. Hello. Nani pata? Tunakupata Mama Hilda. Aya sawa. Mimi naitwa Hilda Mzungu. Uh-huh. Kutoka Kilifi County, Mama Siri wa Kilifi. Mimi nitaongea hivi kuhusu vifaa vya hospitalini. Serikali inaweza kutuma pesa, inaweza kupeana pesa vifaa vinunuliwe. Lakini havitanunuliwa. Wa mama wengi wale mavu wanazalia chini. Mimi ningeonelea hivi wangekuwa kuna vitanda vya special vya, wa, vya wanawake wale mavu ambao wanaweza kununuliwa wakajifungulia waka, 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 waka lakini wengi wa mama wengi wale mavu wanatumia vile vitanda vya kawaida ambao wengi kwa wanazalia chini kwa hivyo ufisadi umekiri ume umetiri kilifi Ufisadi hautaisha kwa sababu wengi wana, wakipata hizo pesa wanafanya mambo yao badala wafanye hudu, wa, 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 wawe watafanya huduma za wale ambao za walengwa hawatapata wale walengwa kwa hivyo mimi nasema hivi ufisadi hautaisha na kuna ku, hata kuna wakati mimi mimi mwenyewe binafsi nilienda hospitalini kwa kwa kwa, kwa mazoezi kwa physiotherapy nikawa kila kila siku nitoe tatu ukishindwa mimi nikaenda wiki mbili elfu moja na tano vikanishinda hata nikaviacha hivyo vya vya vya, 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 vya hayo mazoezi kwa hivyo ufisadi uko tele huko hospitalini na hautaisha yangu ni hayo machache asanteni halo netwa tukupata mama hili tukupata Hey Hilda, uh, tunashukuru sana kwa kwa presentation yako. Na naona Hilda ni kama ame drop off. So tunashukuru sana Hilda, tunaenda kwa Rachel. Rachel tafadhali tu pair presentation yako na mm. tafadhali chukua dakika mbili. Yeah. Hi, uh, afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, kwa majina na kwa majina naitwa Rachel Lafundi mama Siri Nairobi na ningependa kuongelea kuhusu corruption especially or when it comes to you want to report a case na pia you want to maybe you want to represent a group to make a group that is going to have those funds the government funds eh, kwanza nitaanza na corruption ya kesi kwa kotini unafika mahali 
mwanamke mlemavu akipele kesi yake ikifika kwa koti for example yule mwanamke ako na mimba anataka anataka upkeep ya mtoto lakini unapata mwanaume ataki sasa ukifika kwa children's right anakuambia wewe ni mwanamke mlemavu lazima utatoa kitu kidogo ndio uweze kufanya nini kusaidika kwa hii maneno lakini napata hata ile kwenda ile stali ilikuwa shida kupata hii pesa unaweza lipo huko kwa stali ulipe huko kwa kwa children's right na kwa shida and then unafika huko ana wengine wanakurumia wanakuambia wacha tukutume direct kwa children's court ukienda kwa children's court umo na mke anapata shida in case kama it was a policeman who raped unaitishwa badge number na maybe hata hukujua ukushika badge number ya huyu mtu haya inakuwa unaambiwa kwanza uende kwa hiyo station you report you report and then they give you a badge number ukifika hapo wanakuambia utoe pesa ndio waweze kukutolea badge number so unaona inafika hapo pia tunadidimia ndio maana unapata most women wana end up kwa single mothers women with disability second thing ni kuhusu second uh, my second uh, ni uh, presentation is about corruption on uh, government funds unapata sasa kama saizi kuna hii uwezo fund inaenda around unaambiwa mujaze most pwd sawajasoma that is why unapata easy accessibility ya government funds na kwa changamoto kwa ajili wanaambiwa walete mpaka hiyo ma bank statement waandike cv proposal nini na ukipata hapo wakiambiwa waandike proposal ni corruption mtu anakuambia toa 5000 kuandike proposal na ukifikisha hiyo proposal kwa maybe kwa CDF ama kwa hiyo uwezo fund inakataliwa because hai hai var, hai, hai linganishi vizuri unaona hao wale mavo hawasomi so even pia tuna wa, we would like hiyo at least wa someshwe kusu hiyo mambo ya budgeting and everything and to uh, and then also pia inafika mahali pia wanaambiwa wajaze wakijaza form hawajazi vizuri that is why unapata hata ikifika kama wanataka hiyo tax exemption na everything hawazipati because hawaelekezi vizuri vile wanaweza fanya hizi vitu ni hayo tu na nashukuru asante uh, sana kwa hayo uh, i'll invite our last mama siri who is madam belta and madam belta will talk about access to med- medicine when seeking health care karibu sana madam belta uh, thank you so much uh, thank you so much for the invitation and thank you so much for the uh, for the speakers who come before me before me so what i would wish to say about medication is that, that uh, at times you find that uh, a woman with a disability has gone to to a government hospital but then as we know that most of the service providers there some of them especially the major ones have their clinics outside so you'll find that maybe you are going for an operation then somebody tells you oh you know this this is your condition no you need just to go somewhere let me direct you to a very good doctor who will handle you ne- not knowing that where you are being directed it's somebody's clinic so that you go there pay and the services are almost the same which you could have been given at the health facility of the government then another thing i don't know where the mentality of, uh, of uh, women with uh, physical disability came to that uh, we must go through cs session because you find that uh, when a woman with a disability is on labor they automatically know and believe that uh, we must go through cs while some of us have given birth normally without even going through the cs so you find that at times they they for me i believe they put uh, some fear in us so that maybe next time you don't try to get pregnant because you don't uh, they say <laughs> Are you people getting me? <laughs> We are getting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I believe they are putting uh, fear in us 
because you mm. find somebody telling now you will compare hey if uh, uh, hello, I my hello. yes uh, kindly allow madam bella malize kwanza so that we can contribute thank you yeah what i'm saying is that you find that uh, you will start weighing now now if, if i had my first born under I use this uh, this money, it will be expensive and maybe my spouse cannot afford. So then, uh, you know, already fear is in you. So I believe for me, that is corruption. And uh, they're denying us uh, what is duly ours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Bella. Natuna shukuru sana. Ongera kwenu wote, our amazing speakers, both the speakers that presented first and then also with the Mama Sisi. Tume shukuru sana for the time to make one out together. And I really appreciate for your time and also for the amazing presentation. I hope we've been learning and we are still continuing to learn. So I'll move to the next session, uh, which is a question and answer session. But first of all, I want to, sorry, I lost my chat, but I want to recognize that there was a question to Maureen. Uh, Maureen, I hope you noted down the question. Veronica can assist me get the exact question. And then again, there was a question in regards to breast cancer. Somebody asked a question in regards to breast cancer. So to our, maybe uh, Maureen and any other person is going to answer that question. You have uh, at most one minute to answer. And then also, if you have any other question, any other contribution, I kindly invite you on the same, but we have only one minute and then only give uh, opportunity to at most uh, four participants who have questions. So maybe you can uh, raise up your hand so that you get the chance to speak. But in regards to that, uh, I invite Maureen to answer the first question that was addressed to her. Thank you so much. If you have a question, kindly let us know you have a question and we'll reach out to you. At most four people, kindly. Thank you. Maureen. Okay, if uh, we can't get her now, uh, sorry, we can't address that question. Hello. Because of... Hello. Oh, this is Maureen. <laughs> Maureen, kindly, you have at most one minute to answer. Yeah, uh, the question was about um, uh, why did I meant when I say that disability women are displaying their bodies? So I didn't mean that they are, they are displaying their bodies. I meant that they don't have freedom to wear anything they want because of their disability. Maybe your legs are not looking good, so you can't wear the nice dress. You will wear a, a, a trouser or something else or a long dress. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Maureen. And I believe the, the answer is home. So the no, next I didn't question... get. I didn't get that response. And she just repeat. <laughs> okay. Maureen, kindly one uh, 30 seconds, kindly repeat your response. Hello, I didn't mean that they are displaying their bodies. I meant that uh, they don't have freedom to wear what they want. Like if you want to dress a short, a short skirt, you can't wear because maybe your legs are not looking good. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Maureen. Um, Mama Siri. Madam Bensa, I hope that is home. So to our next question was a question somebody was asking to Aki Katwa Matiti, Titi Ama Matiti Zote, do we consider that as disability? If I got the question right, sorry, I can't uh, trace the question. Maybe one person can help us answer that question if we have the answer as we're speaking now. Anybody? I can try. I can. Thank you. Can I seconds. try? Yes. Uh, I think it is. And uh, it's not again, but it is. Eh? Because this is a person who can now not breastfeed her child normally the way other women would be doing. 
the, the child will love to use other forms of, of feeding. So it is a disability because it is a challenge to the person. Though it has uh, not been captured yet <laughs> into the Disability Act. Okay, thank you, Madam Benta. Now, uh, also, I was uh, thinking maybe we can look at the UN definition of uh, disability. And then again, uh, maybe according to the Disability Act that we have, and also at the registration of the National Council, maybe have we interacted, because I know there exists a number, do the National Council also is registering as a person with disability, recognize it? But I think it can be something that we can also debate on, maybe for our next time. Thank you. Yes, uh, Madam Benta, your hand is up. I don't know whether you have a question or a comment. One minute, kindly. Uh, uh, I think my question had been answered, but uh, in as much as we are in a learning process, I believe that some of the terminologies we should actually understand before we, we start our presentations, because uh, we feel demeaned when somebody says that uh, those who are normal, because we as PWDs, we are not abnormal. Uh, we are not lesser people. It's only that maybe our legs or our hands or our ears, which are not functioning well. So the terminologies ought to be looked in before we, we come and do our presentation. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madam Benta, for that. And also from Madam Annette, uh, Harrison White's disability, uh, because it limits the women, uh, the woman to the breastfeeding in the normal way. Thank you, Madam Annette. But I think this is something that we can also open it up for a discussion maybe next time. Yeah, because uh, we think, yes, it is, but also at some point, no, because it was recognized by the, the disability acts that we have. Thank you so much. I think I'll give this back to Veronica or, yeah, so that we can have the final session. Thank you so much. You've been so amazing. I really appreciate it. Pardon my voice, it it wasn't that good today. I'm a bit unwell. Yeah, but uh, you have been an amazing audience on the same. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, back to you, uh, Veronica. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vilda, for a wonderful facilitation. We really enjoyed uh, today's session and thank you. So at this point, I'm going to take it to Craig to give us the final vows for today. Thank you. Craig, welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you all. I am here on behalf of our um, founder and managing trustee, Lizzie Kiyama. Angependa kuwa nasi, lakini kidogo alishikika. So uh, I can give the closing comments on her behalf. Uh, thank you so i am going i am going to read um first of all you can hear me clearly all of us yes thank yes. You. yes thank you thank you thank you so to close up this session um corruption and discrimination go hand in hand the experiences mm. shared here indicate that women with disabilities are exposed to abuse by those meant to provide care protection and governance. In addition to existing stigma, corruption adds another layer of hurdles in every part of the lives of women with disabilities. From the embezzlement of public funds intended to benefit women with disabilities, the extortion in the process to ensure inclusion, delayed or denied justice are all forms of corruption that show up, contribute to, the, to denying the bodily autonomy of women with disabilities. Understanding this link is key, is a key step towards accountability and awareness of the micro and macro effects of corruption on the lives of women with disabilities. We shall share a report of this webinar and also share details of our next webinar that we would like to, you to be part of. Finally, we thank you and every one of you for taking part uh, in, in, and, and taking time out to attend this webinar as we walk this journey to highlight 
the link between corruption and the bodily autonomy of women and girls with disabilities. Asante Nisana, thank you all. We have taken time. We have been very participative today. It means a lot to us. And ours is, first of all, to say Asante Nikabisa. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.